Today, I talk about why I think DeAnthony Melton will most likely get traded this offseason, and then later, I rant about Tobias Harris. However, the Sixers only have three positive trade assets on the roster right now, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and DeAnthony Melton. The Sixers also have zero picks to trade unless they call up Brooklyn to make the pick unprotected that we gave them in the Harden deal, and then we could trade the 2029 first round pick if we did that. But it's clear the Sixers aren't trading Embiid and Maxi. Therefore, I think Melton will be traded this offseason. If the Sixers believe in Jaden Springer, this makes even more sense to me. Personally, I believe Springer could give what Melton gave. Now, most likely Melton definitely will provide more three-point shooting than Springer at the NBA level. But Springer will add more size and bring way more to offer off the dribble and off the catch. He will get more rim pressure while actually having the ability to consistently finish around the rim uh, through contact. And also he will shoot mid-range jumpers every now and again. I'd argue he probably offers more on-ball defense, point of attack defense than De'Anthony Melton, while Melton provides more off-ball defense compared to Springer at this moment. And you also got to keep in mind Springer shot 47% from three in the G League, so clearly his three ball just keeps improving. And defensively, he's going to be special. It's time to free up as many minutes for him as possible in my eyes. I also think Melton is at peak value, and I don't see a crazy jump from him while Springer is just getting started. I just think Melton would be more of the same, maybe a little improvement. I could easily be wrong. Maybe he does take a jump, but I'll take my chances. I honestly believe... Jalen McDaniels and Daniel House Jr. or even Shake Milton if given the trust and confidence from the coaching staff while putting them in the right spots for the whole season would have produced just as much as Melton in different ways while bringing more size to the table. I don't really see the Sixers re-signing Melton next year anyway, which is another reason to move off him now. The hopes of doing a Melton trade is getting a pick that you would either use for yourself where you have a cost-controlled rookie under contract at a position you lack in would then help you in the future with the new CBA or you can use that pick or DeAnthony Melton to boost the value of a Tobias Harris trade package. I look at the Kings as a prime trade partner. They need any type of help defensively on the perimeter and Melton would fit in their system like a glove. They also have the number 24 pick which is enticing to me or if you can scout correctly you could definitely get a two-way wing at that spot. Look at the Nuggets. They drafted Christian Brown at the number 21 spot last year. He's had some pretty decent playoff moments already and is a sweet, cheap contract they have for years now. How would the trade look? Well, the Sixers could literally just trade Melton for the pick straight up or throw in a filler guy like P.J. Dozier who fits what Nick Nurse likes. 6'6 with a 6'11 wingspan, strong IQ, and a great defender. He'd be a solid regular season contributor if he stays healthy, and who knows, maybe he grows into more than that. He was on his way there in Denver. He worked his way from a two-way contract to a regular contract, but then he had major injuries. He had an ACL injury, and it really held him back and kind of forced Denver to move on from him, and he hasn't really gotten a chance ever since. Like I said earlier, Melton could be used to increase the value of a Tobias Harris trade package as well. For example, you can add him next to Tobias and then maybe a team like the Pacers would give you Jalen Smith instead of Daniel Tice. Don't think the Pacers would ever add Jalen Smith, but I'm just saying don't be surprised if Tobias were to get traded, Melton might be in the package to entice other teams. But the whole idea of Tobias Harris getting dealt would be getting off that contract. So you have flexibility to spend and add some depth. You can even potentially make a three-team deal happen. The Pistons get Tobias and a future first from the Sacramento Kings. Sixers get Bojan Bogdanovic, who brings size and high-volume movement shooting, basically a bigger Seth Curry. Then the Kings get De'Anthony Melton. I don't think the Pistons do Tobias and Bojan straight up. So adding a team to give them a pick could get it done because the Sixers don't have a pick to trade. Sixers fans will continue to sleep on the fit of Bojan next to Embiid and Maxi and potentially Harden, but I will not. Trust me, we will get into my reasons later in the video. Anyway, if Fred Van Fleet wants to come, you can sign him or you re-sign Harden. Then it's Fred or Harden, Maxi, Bogdanovich, McDaniels, Embiid. 
You can even start Paul Reed at the four with that ample of high volume shooting on the perimeter. The thing is, for me, supplying Nurse with off-ball offense is much more important because I know he will get his guys to play hard defensively and throw out unique schemes. Also, reminder, Sixers lost to Trey Young, Kevin Herter, and Bogdan Bogdanovich years back, all known as traffic cones. While we had all-world defenders in Simmons, and Embiid, and Thibel, I've had enough with defense. We have one of the best rim protectors in the damn league with one of the best defensive-minded head coaches in the league now. Get shooters and off-ball scoring threats who don't need to pound the ball to get in a rhythm and ain't afraid of missing threes and will just keep shooting, please. Duncan freaking Robinson and Gabe Vincent are doing work in the finals. Not elite defenders by any means. They just play hard and are put in the right spots defensively. But more importantly, they hit every open look they get, which then helps their defense because then they can get set defensively. I swear Sixer fans do not understand having an offense with perimeter threats everywhere especially off ball, helps your defense because the other team got to guard up on everybody and run around with them running off screens because they're a threat to catch and shoot it off screens while moving. And that takes energy out of them for their offense. Please stop with the notion if we lose Tobias for a high volume shooter. Oh my God, we're going to fall off a cliff defensively. We need his size. Oh my God, we're going to be too small. Even though if you watch, you could tell when McDaniels was in place of Tobias, you didn't even notice any drop off. Every time Tobias Harris wasn't playing, you didn't notice. If anything, you felt like a more dangerous team and your role players were doing more of the intangibles. McDaniels and House Jr. provide more defense than Tobias with more athleticism and they won't pound the ball offensively. Tobias could be cut with zero return and the Sixers would be better off. His time has run its course. I respect him for changing his game, but both need to move on to make the next step. The Sixers and Tobias. Ah. Say James Harden walks. In no world do I have any interest to see Tobias Harris' usage to go up. Please let him walk as well. I would rather all that usage to go into Tyrese Maxey. I mean, everyone forgets pre Harden trade. Seth Curry was our second option because Tobias Harris was playing terrible. Enough is enough. I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of throwing out trades and Sixers fans being like, oh, that's not enough. Well, guess what? We 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 are not in the position to say that's not enough. Tobias Harris's contract is crap. Take what you can get. Take anything. Cut him. I've just personally seen enough of him on the Sixers with that large contract. He's too much of a indecisive decision maker, slow decision maker, whether it's just shooting right away or making a simple one more pass. That aspect is inconsistent. Yes, every now and again, he'll show you what he's worth, but at $39 million, no thank you. Back to the topic though, Melton for me is just very tradable right now considering he's at peak value. We have guard depth in Maxi and Janet Springer and then the free agents who are rumored either James Harden comes back or Fred Van Fleet. That's enough. I, I'm good with that. And quite honestly, Melton doesn't really provide anything consistent offensively outside of standstill threes. If you can use him to get off Tobias or get a late first rounder in this deep draft, I'm all for it. Please do it, Daryl Morey. Please don't listen to these Sixers fans.